ಸಚ್ಚಿದಾನಂದ ವಿಗ್ರಹ ಅನಾದಿರಾದಿರ್ಗೋವಿಂದ ಸರ್ವಕಾರಣ ಕಾರಣ ಭೋಕ್ತಾಂತಪಸೋಕಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಸುಹೃದ ಸರ್ವೂತ ಶಾಂತಿ ಮೃಚ್ಚತಿ ಐ ರೆಂಡರ್ ಮೈ ಸಲ್ಯೂಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಟು ದ ರೂಟ್ಲೆಸ್ ರೂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಕಾಸ್ಲೆಸ್ ಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಐ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಮೈ ಪ್ರಾಸ್ಟ್ರೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ಫೀಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಲಿಬರೇಟೆಡ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ಸ್ and i extend my salutations to the divinity which is inherent and innate in all of us thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to speak through this forum meditation and study circle has been one platform with which i have almost two decades of association i have been giving uh, several lectures and discourses and i am really thankful to mr vasudev and mrs vani vasudev for organizing these lecture programs so systematically and meticulously i remember my masters my guides my philosophers mr s krishnamurthy and shrimati rukmini krishnamurthy for giving me all that encouragement and nourishment to grow in public speaking i remember them very much and i believe and i believe their presence here in the meditation and study circle platform with this i thank the audience basically because i usually connect to the audience of meditation and study circle very easily the connect is so profound at times and i can feel the pulse of it as i go through the discourse and i thank them and their enlightened audience and serious spiritual persuaders i wish them all the best in their life with this i am beginning this presentation probably a lot many of you are curious to know why this title is sounding bit weird irrelevant or maybe mysterious let's go through this particular discourse and uh, i'm sharing my slides with you people so the title of uh, today's discourse or presentation is could we practice sumo the very word sumo is a uh, bit uh, mysterious and uh, cryptically presented here i have a question to you could we practice sumo what comes to your mind when you hear the phrase sumo it is not the word it is the phrase i am not indicating this sumo which is a popular sport of wrestling in japan people train and build heavy body containing lot of fat and weighing hundreds of kilograms and they engage in wrestling 
and there are a lot of fans for this sport a sumo fighter needs to engage in a serious sadhana and it's a sport in its own right and in its own kind let me clarify you people right in the beginning in case if you were thinking about this sumo which means wrestling in japan i'm sorry i'm not indicating this sumo then what is the sumo that i'm referring to it is a phrase shut up move on that is the sumo that i am talking about probably this phrase may be sounding bit aggressive please don't misunderstand i don't mean to be aggressive and neither it is an aggressive phrase let's try to understand what exactly it is you all know life is complex and at times the life becomes severely complex and human relations are so sensitive and human understanding is so superficial sometimes we get into arguments because our beliefs are different from the beliefs of others our attitudes are different from the attitudes of others our perspectives are different from the perspectives of others look at this particular image this image consists of some blocks hollow blocks of concrete one person who is seeing these blocks from one side says there are seven blocks but the other person who is standing on the other side is only able to see five blocks and then begins the difference in opinion difference in perception and an argument between them probably both are right but then what is going wrong here what is going wrong here is the person who says seven is standing on one side and his premise is different when compared to another person who is standing on the other side and his premise is different the premise or premises are different basically because that's what they are able to perceive neither the person who is saying 7 is wrong nor the person who is saying 5 is wrong such conditions such circumstances we do face in our lives many times because variety is the spice of life and we see all different kinds of personalities in the world people differ differ many times fundamentally and in such conditions should we keep arguing is argument worth the result and first and foremost thing should we argue or what should we exactly do it is said that when opinions differ there are various methods to resolve the differences in opinion don't allow the difference in opinion to get into a conflict because conflict is a bit 
what do you say intense term whereas difference in opinion is less intense you can solve the difference in opinion by several methods and the most important method is shut up and move on this is called sumo this is a wonderful book which is written by an international speaker and this speaker is from uk his name is paul meggy paul meggy became a very popular international speaker and he started writing several books on self development or what you call personal development which really opened up the consciousness of a lot of people he has his own followers and fans he has conducted hundreds of workshops traveled all over the world and couple of times he even visited india and gave some of the wonderful workshops i happened to read his book called sumo almost 10 to 12 years back this book had a profound effect on me today i am not probably going to talk too intensely about the spiritual uh, dimension i'm going to talk about self development in common sense self development includes in fact the development of our psyche basically how we look at things how we perceive how we cognize how we behave what is our attitude why do we behave the way that we behave and how our behavior our attitude our beliefs our perspectives can always create conflicts unless until we understand ourselves very clearly getting into conflicts is probably easier but resolving the conflicts we need to have some skills called conflict resolving skills and one of the conflict resolving skills is shut up and move on that's what i mean by saying sumo and you all agree when i say we live in a complex world and we have a short time and we need to make most of our life we have a short time to live since the time is short we need to make most of it and do the best to ourselves and do the best to the rest of the world how can you do the best to yourself unless until you understand yourself it is really impossible and it's the same how can you do the best to rest of the world unless and until you understand rest of the world so understanding becomes a key word uh to remind you if you have heard jk that is a great philosopher of india by name jitu krishna murthy in his many of the lectures he stressed upon the importance of understanding you can make a big difference in your personal and professional lives only when you understand or try to understand yourself and as well the rest of the world probably this presentation is trying to help you in probing your understanding of yourself and your understanding of the rest of the world probably you may be right or probably you may be partly wrong or maybe utterly wrong let us try to understand this topic together 
Many times the wise thing to do is shut up and move on. Don't you think that is the best thing that we can do? It is only our ego many times creates the conflicts. And when you don't accept the things as they are and allow the things to settle, we create a lot of conflicts. This is Mr. Paul McGee, a motivational speaker, and his book created immense impact in this world. And the book touched many lives. Please don't mistake or misunderstand the phrase sumo. It doesn't mean forgive and forget, please. It doesn't mean just ignore reality and get on with life. It doesn't mean get over it. It doesn't mean somehow pull together. No, no, no. It is not speaking about compromises that you make in order to avoid the conflict. It doesn't say you need to be so magnanimous. But what it is trying to say is, is there a possibility for you to stop, look and listen? When things go wrong, when things get tense, when differences crop up, when we are not on the same side of the fence, and when the mind starts getting into argumentative mode, then can you stop? Can you look for a while? And can you listen? Stop for a while means cease to think for a while. Let the silence reign inside. Let the silence settle in your psyche. Just look at the situation. Look at the situation impartially. Neither accepting it nor condemning the situation. Can you entertain a thought? Neither accepting it nor condemning it. If you can do that, you have grown in maturity. Normally people take several lives to reach that stage. Invariably we align with our thoughts and either supporting our thoughts or condemning our thoughts. Is it possible to simply look at your thoughts Neither siding with the thought nor going against with your thought. Can you stop all that rubbish noise which is taking place? And can you simply listen? When you stop, you are in silence. When you look impartially, you are allowing the light of awareness to illuminate the issue or illumine the issue and when you try to listen, you are expressing your will to understand. You should listen to yourself and you should listen to the rest of the world. This is only possible Oh, only, only possible after you stop and after you look. It's not so easy that you are riding a vehicle. 
you come across a traffic chaos you stop you look you listen it's not that easy this is something which has to happen in sight it is a inner change that has to take place shut up also means let go let go it's easier said than done let's go to what is that let go and what is the importance of letting go after shut up it's move on move on means don't get stuck at the place don't get stuck with the issue don't carry your present to future don't carry your past to present don't get stuck anywhere getting stuck is easier and that's what we many times seriously keep doing after getting stuck we bother we get into a kind of misery we keep thinking rehearsing and what i mean to say reliving the situation why not we leave the things as they are sometimes and move on look at your future look at the many possibilities lying in front of you you need to take some action go ahead with the action what can i do in this particular situation that is the question let go let go that means to say first and foremost thing get into action what can i do that means to say you are proactive instead of saying i cannot do anything that is a reaction the best way is to respond what may i do what can i do what could i do you are called to take action and once you start taking action you change the things because there are many possibilities and you be positive when you look at your future anyway move on means you are not going to remain static where you are you are going ahead and you are going on letting go is easier said than doing an argument took place a verbal scuffle happened a difference in opinion became so serious and so severe there were verbal abuses there was a physical scuffle and temper raged and all that was unnecessary let go that letting go is most difficult thing to practice to share with you i have been delivering these lectures this kind of lectures since a long long time don't think i am an exception no 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 i am a very ordinary human being and letting go has been a very very difficult task to me of course partially i can say i have gone through this process of letting go but not completely there are so many things which are hard stuck in my mind just like you people i am not able to forget i am not able to let go because i find this particular part of sadhana is most difficult thing. if we can let go life becomes so lighter and so easier look at children for them everything is a play they are neither bothered about acceptance or nor bothered about rejection they, they just play with every toy when a toy ceases to be interesting 
after playing for a while they leave it and play with something else they don't carry any kind of feelings as they leave a toy and move ahead because they love to move on and they like to carry a light heart and a light mind knowingly or unknowingly because their mind is not conditioned to accumulate their mind is not conditioned to think the way we people as adults think we cannot do so because we store everything in our memory whereas a child doesn't store anything that means to say the mind is not recording anything neither it is discriminating something as good or something as bad something is correct or something is incorrect it's not fixated with dualities it just is playing with the toys that's given to play we cannot do so because we interpret we conclude we draw our own notions we develop our own conjectures we cling to things and letting go is impossible and extremely painful to us i can say it is extremely painful to us probably we love to cling to the objects that's why objects and subjects as such that's why buddha in his preachings always said anatta 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 means disattachment or detachment whatever you call it. detachment is a most important thing that is seen in children and since we attach since we accumulate since we store everything in our memory bank we condition our mind we can never look at anything freshly what exactly happens is our perspective towards life gets distorted we move away from reality we live in our own dream world and we expect a lot from anything everything from anyone from everyone when our expectations are not met we get disheartened life is full of twists and turns and one need to face several challenges in life the challenges that i face i have faced or i'm facing may be entirely different from the challenges that you people are facing every person has his own unique challenges because god has not prescribed the same curriculum for every person the curriculum changes depending upon how much each one of us have evolved and the challenges also differ because through these challenges and as we keep facing and resolving these challenges and as we keep moving on we keep evolving also when you think it's over a new challenge arises what is life tell me if it is devoid of challenges if life is devoid of challenges such a life is boring also you get into the trap of boredom there's nothing much to do there is nothing which is provoking your evolution so every challenge is a disguise is a disguise is something which has come to you in disguise to help you in evolution every challenge is an opportunity the best way to meet the challenges is to challenge the challenges and in this process being challenged in life becomes inevitable and that's how the life evolves over a period of time and as you evolve 
with several challenges you develop several skills to resolve those challenges or face those challenges and move ahead but sometimes some challenges are so serious so severe and we do not know how to face the challenge how to wriggle out of the challenge gaining some experience and evolving through it in such conditions we get stuck we get stuck in a muddled situation and we know not how to get out of it probably some of you have faced such situations including me even i have faced such situations but i didn't know the skill of sumo shut up and move on i remember dv gundappa for a wonderful kagga that he has given which means the same shut up and move on shut up and move on is a phrase which was given by paul meggy recently but kagga has wonderfully explained the essence of that and kagga has given a wonderful meaning for that particular phrase it gave this particular meaning long 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 back and it it it, it shared the wisdom of sumo let me share that particular kagga probably many of you know kannada and for those people who do not know and understand kannada i'll try to translate it in english ileinda molake yoge vandu tamategal illa halamagu vandu tutturi dani illa ಬೆಳಕೀವ ಸೂರ್ಯ ಚಂದಿರರ ದೊಂದು ಸದ್ದಿಲ್ಲ ಹೊಲಿ ನಿನ್ನ ತುಟಿಗಳನ್ನು ಮಂಕು ತಿಮ್ಮ ಇಳೆಯಿಂದ ಮೊಳಕೆ ಯೊಗೆ ಒಂದು ತಮಟೆಗಳಿಲ್ಲ ವೆನ್ ದ ಸೀಡ್ ಸ್ಪ್ರೌಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸಾಯಿಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಅಪಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಔಟ್ ಸೈಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ನೋ ಡ್ರಮ್ ಬೀಟ್ಸ್ ನೋ ಬಡಿ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಟು ಬೀಟ್ ದ ಡ್ರಮ್ಸ್ ಫಲ ಮಾಗು ಒಂದು ತುತ್ತೂರಿ ದನಿ ಇಲ್ಲ ವೆನ್ ದ ಫ್ರೂಟ್ ಗೆಟ್ಸ್ ರೈಪಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಟ್ರೀ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ಬಡಿ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಬ್ಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ದ ಟ್ರಂಪೆಟ್ ಬೆಳಕೀವ ಸೂರ್ಯ ಚಂದಿರದೊಂದು ಸದ್ದಿಲ್ಲ ಆಲ್ ದ ಟೈಮ್ ದ ಸನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಮೂನ್ ಆರ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಲೈಟ್ ಟು ಅರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೇ ನೆವರ್ create any sound the working silence holi ninna tutigalannu manku timma stitch your lips that means to say shut up and keep moving and don't get stuck don't blame anybody there are six principles of sumo the first principle given by meggy is change your t-shirt it does not carry the literal meaning don't think that you are wearing a t-shirt and you need to change the t-shirt i'll come to the meaning of that change your t-shirt let's try to understand it elaborately develop fruity thinking hippo time is okay remember the beach ball learn latin ditch doris day probably these uh, six principles are sounding bit uh, greek and latin to us at this point of time don't worry about them let's try to take each principle and understand what do they exactly mean once you follow these six principles probably you have practiced sumo and sumo is all about all about understanding 
understanding in two dimensions understanding yourself the first three principles are dealing with understanding yourself change your t-shirt develop fruity thinking hippo time is okay these three first principles are about understanding yourself then remember the beach ball learn latin and ditch doris day are the three other principles which help you to understand others i remember a great ancient uh, quote which says man know thyself thou shall know the universe that means to say man know yourself so that you will know the rest of the world so understanding ourselves is the first and the foremost step without that if we try to understand others probably our understanding is distorted so try to understand ourselves the to understand ourselves the first principle is the key principle it initiates the process of understanding ourselves change your to t-shirt what does it mean i have two questions to ask you most of us have these habits have you driven car and reached a destination only to say how did i get here it has happened many times to me i would i would have driven a car to a married chaultry and i would have rushed my car also and i am lost in my own thoughts i would have reached the chaultry and i would have parked only to realize probably i was mechanically driving my car without even being aware that i was driving it became a mechanical process a lot many things that we do have become mechanical in our life we are never present when things are happening we are on our own mental vacation our mind is somewhere and our body is somewhere else body keeps working automatically because you made the process of driving quite mechanical so that creates boredom and that's how people cannot engage in one occupation for a long time because they ultimately translate every occupation into a mechanical job and then the boredom haunts us we don't see anything that is fresh and we lose interest in that particular occupation so much of what we do in life we do without consciously thinking about it it's called as autopilot syndrome that means to say we have switched on the autopilot mode and anything everything that is given to us as a task we would convert it into a mechanical process and most of the times we are absent when we are doing that particular task has this happened to you any time have you driven car unconsciously for a distance and then realized did i really drive a car to such a great distance yes it has happened to me many times and brushing your teeth has it become a mechanical process yes over a period of time it has become a mechanical process there is no dif difference between an electrical toothbrush and the manual toothbrush that i am using I, I, my my manual method of brushing also has become highly mechanized take anything and everything that you are doing the response becomes very mechanical we never look at anything afresh if you disagree with me if you disagree saying that you are not in autopilot syndrome and you invariably inevitably keep consciously doing everything if you disagree 
you are suffering from bsc crisis what is that what is that bsc crisis bse crisis is something which i'll explain clearly in the next particular slide but at this point of time let's try to understand if i ask you a few questions like which person has the biggest influence on your life who deserves the most credit for where you are currently in your life whose advice and opinions do you tend always act upon do you tend to always act upon invariably lot many of us probably say one of my teachers or many of my teachers or my mentors or my guides or my philosophers or my parents or some particular books this is how we usually say please take a look in the mirror please take a look in the mirror whom do you find when you look in the mirror you find yourself and you are the person who need to influence your life and you deserve the most credit for where you are currently and you need to act upon your own decisions yes mentors are there philosophers are there guides are there definitely you can you can you can take their help and use them as props why don't you actually give the credit for where you are at least to yourself whatever you got from others ultimately you are the one who put it put that into action but for you it wouldn't have materialized such a change would not have occurred in you and why don't you give the credit to yourself take a look in the mirror whom do you find if you disagree with that probably you are like this blame someone else crisis you give the credit to someone else and probably if one of the advice is given by the same person if it doesn't work you blame that person because you didn't make yourself responsible for the decisions that you took you made someone else responsible and in the process if something if some advice given by those people did not work in your life then you blame that some other person who gave the advice many times this is what happens there are people who keep intensely engaged in bse crisis they keep blaming every person on this earth everyone including the sun and ev everyone under the sun they keep blaming everybody it has become a habit to some of the people it's called blame someone else crisis blame someone else and project you are a victim and you wear a victim t-shirt so this is easier to do isn't it instead of me taking the responsibility or owning the responsibility for whatever is happening in my life if i consider my mentors my guides my philosophers my parents my brothers my sibling whatever they misguided me and that's why i am in this poor situation today i am facing so many problems is easier to blame the other person and then you can act as a victim and you wear a victim t-shirt and try to gain sympathy from people blaming someone has become a serious crisis in some people's life some people do not own responsibility for the current situation in their life they say their present life is nothing to do with previous decisions they say their present life is nothing to do with past actions 
and they say the present life is nothing to do with their attitudes and some people say everything is because of the rest of the world because of the rest of the world easy to put the blame on others and playing the bsc card why wear the victim t-shirt why people wear the victim t-shirt have you seen some people going on with the blaming game many times we see people outside and also many times we have done this for whatever misery today i am facing i probably make many other people responsible rather than myself why people wear the victim t-shirt see what i'm talking today is plain common sense and this is where we need to act first instead of getting into lofty spiritual principles all the time sometimes we need to look at our lives and look at simple things where we are going wrong probably some of these attributes are there with us let's try to probe ourselves let us try to prod ourselves and where have we erred with respect to these things why we wear the victim t-shirt there are five reasons given there is nothing i can do that means to say the locus of control is external i have lost control on myself and i have allowed everyone else in the world to control me and i accept it this is a poor way of navigating through life low self esteem and poor self image probably is one another reason many people carry very low self esteem for various reasons and instead of working on the self esteem which they can always improvise they wear a victim t-shirt and wearing victim t-shirt has become a habit among many people and they enjoy wearing it and they think that enjoying and wearing victim t-shirt frees a person owning responsibility so people say that i am a product of my own circumstances in life every circumstance that i faced in my life was so miserable and i became like this instead of that any person who is involved in self development self improvisation should say like this as stephen covey says i am not a product of my circumstances anymore i am a product of my own decisions i am not a slave of my circumstances let any circumstance confront me or let me confront the circumstance it doesn't matter i am not i am not going to be ruled by the circumstances i rather take right decisions and i believe i am a product of my own decisions there is a sumo wisdom with respect to this when you wear victim t-shirt you become a passenger in your life and allow others to determine your life never be passengers on the road of life that is the worst thing that one can do please take control of the things by sitting in the driver's seat handling the steering wheel wheel and determining where you want to head don't give that control to others because you need to own the responsibility of your life you need to own the decisions that you make you need to become responsible for every action in which you engage and you need to become responsible for every thought that arises so what i mean to say is whatever you do with your trikarana trikarana should be under your control and should be under your self awareness okay sometimes life is so harsh so cruel some people are genuinely victims no doubt 
many things of the many instances many episodes we have heard how children are mishandled how children are abused how children are punished due to various circumstances in life it happens how industrial workers are harassed how they are handled by their superiors and they are helpless yes there are there are situations where you are genuine victim no doubt but remember ultimately you need to learn how to become a survivor how can you continue being a being in the position of a victim for a very 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 long time that's not the path of evolution that's not the path that you should choose one should actually learn how to become a survivor you need to shift your mode from victim to a survivor and start taking things into your control i am not always responsible for what happens to me this is what we all know many times we may not be responsible for something that is happening it may be an accidental thing or maybe it's an incidental thing what happens to us is definitely not in our control it's decided by our destiny it's decided by some higher power sometimes but i am responsible for how i choose to respond yes what happens to me is something where i don't have control but my response to what happens is something which is definitely under my control so why i not respond to the things the way i need to respond i need to remove the victim t-shirt first and foremost step in sumo that is shut up and move on try to understand the attitude the perspective that you are carrying in case if you are carrying this kind of an attitude where you consider yourself as a victim of circumstances and keep blaming everyone else in the world you know there is a victim blaming day april 13th of every year is 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 probably observed as victim blaming day okay or acting as a victim or acting as a victim and blaming everyone else for being a victim of circumstances that they created this is an international day you know probably it's a stress buster okay it may be a stress buster but it's not a true stress buster which can help you in the path of evolution and you need to definitely shed this victim t-shirt it needs a lot of courage and change you need to move you need to move that's why i said shut up understand where you are shut up and move on how do you move on stop saying life is not fair of course life is not fair for several people for hundreds of people thousands of people for millions of people instead of saying life is not fair say what can i do in this situation yes life is not fair accept it it's not fair no problem but what am i supposed to do when this is the situation and don't keep telling this is just the way i am when when problems arise when you face some serious consequences uh, for your misdoings then don't say what can i do this is just the way i am i cannot help it i cannot help it easier said instead of saying and expressing your helplessness just stop look listen and say how can i improve that's a positive way of taking things forward instead of saying there's nothing i can do look at the kind of politics in our country how dirty it is how shameful it is how how ridiculous it is is it not a mockery of our constitution and nothing i can do yes 
nothing you can do probably you feel like that at this point of time but immediately move from there and start looking at the positive side there is always something i can do what can i do ask the question what can i do what is there in my hand instead of saying and expressing your helplessness and hopelessness instead of saying it is impossible let us find a way let us find a way to resolve this situation don't say it is impossible instead of trying to blame someone instead of looking for some person to blame for the given situation why not you simply shut your mouth and say how can we move forward that is getting out of that sticky situation how can we move forward together that means to say you are moving away from a victim stage to a survivor stage and this is an essential skill which is required this is where the growth lies so i am trying to summarize the sumo one shut up the autopilot syndrome and move on to self awareness don't keep doing things mechanically and bring whatever you are doing into the light of your self awareness right like uh, light of your awareness shut up blaming someone else easier to do that move on taking personal responsibility take responsibility if otherwise you 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 continue to be irresponsible till till the last moment probably it's a it's a futile life shut up missed opportunities and regret please move on to growing as a person don't keep all the time thinking about the opportunities that you missed and don't carry the regret forever start getting into action mode that is growing as a person yes i missed an opportunity now i know that i shouldn't miss i shouldn't miss i learned a lesson the regret is required but it should be on the positive side all the time you keep regretting it will not help you probably that makes you feel more and more guilty and and that really creates quite a lot of misery in life please focus on growing as a person what happened is happened leave the past why are you stuck in that hard groove for a long time shut being the passenger and take driving seat of your life never be a passenger on the road of life drive drive you have been sent to this plane to drive and be responsible and own responsibility for anything and everything that you are going to do in life shut up speaking victim language and learn sumo language shut up wishing your life would get better rather move on making it so yes dreaming is important yes you dream but never stop with dreaming the dream should turn into reality so how will it turn into reality unless you you work on it and translate it and develop fruity thinking this is a second important principle thinking is like breathing many times we are breathing but we are not even aware that we are breathing isn't it again it's gone out of our self awareness give attention to how you think thinking also has become a process of that kind it happens Uh, it is said what is a what is a situation of man in the modern world somebody asked this question what is the psychological situation of man in the modern world the psychological situation of man in the modern world is lost in thoughts it's a phrase lost in thoughts l i t man is lost in thoughts but 99% of the thoughts are not registered at all thoughts arise they move and they go we are not even aware of what we are thinking see there is a wonderful model called tier model thoughts have immense power unfortunately we have not plumbed the energy of thoughts we have allowed the thoughts to rain on us instead of turning those thoughts into positive energy because everything begins with thinking look at the tier model tier is an acronym thinking 
gives rise to emotions thinking and emotions are followed by actions and every action that you engage in has a result of its own that means to say everything started from thinking the moment the thought arised the emotion with the thought also arised thought and emotion together pushed you into action and you acted upon it and then you are going to face the results that means to say as the thought so the emotions as the emotions so the actions as the actions so the consequences so everything begins as a thought hitler engaged in the second world war the second world war was acted upon it was a physical manifestation in this world but where was the war fought first the war was first fought in the mind of hitler it came as a thought to him and then emotions joined he got engaged in actions and the world had to witness devastation economic depression loss of lives and loss of peace see everything begins from thought that's why william james ideally said you can change your life by changing your attitude william james is a great american psychologist great american psychologist he once said unless you change your attitude you cannot change your life so thinking determines everything think differently then you feel differently when you feel differently you behave differently when you behave differently you naturally achieve different results many times we keep saying look whatever said and then my end results are same what should i do your end results are same basically because you are not thinking differently unless thoughts change nothing can change the fundamental ground where the change has to take place is thought or thoughts superficially if you try to make up for change through different actions it's not very helpful your thoughts determine the reality that you construct and ultimately your reality is responsible for taking you through actions which probably give results that you desire so reflect on how you think and what you think most powerful ways to control our lives is to reflect reflection on and reflection in we hardly do this this is the process of self observation self observation is the key for self realization self observation happens only when you engage in reflection how often we reflect upon the thoughts that are passing through our mind we do not reflect rather we align with the thoughts if we have to reflect upon our thoughts we need to raise to the next higher level where as i said you entertain a thought neither supporting it nor condemning it that's called choiceless awareness so wonderfully explained by jiddu krishna murthy when you get into that self awareness and when you raise your consciousness beyond the thought level and as you allow the thoughts to move on without participating in the ruffle created by the thoughts and simply you see the thoughts probably you are reflecting on it and majority of the times we do not we join with our thoughts with our own sides positive or negative so what influences our thinking there are lots and lots of factors which influence the way we think and what we think there are lot there is lot of research done in this area maybe your background 
maybe your previous experiences maybe the company that you keep maybe the media there are different researchers who have given different number of factors i have come across 12 factors which do influence the way we think and what we think but meggy gives this four particular factors your background your previous experiences the company that you keep and the media and these factors so profoundly influence you your culture your tradition your uh, practices and uh, probably the society in which you live and the people uh, with whom you actually spend a lot of your time and the kind of teachers that you got and the kind of mentors philosophers guides that you got and and, and the basic uh, ethic that was taught to you and probably your own life experiences and uh, maybe the media that you watch and the media that you actually engage in all these have profound profound influences there are four types of faulty thinking the inner critic the broken record the martyr syndrome and trivial pursuit these are four types of serious faulty thinking we call it as distorted thinking whenever we are thinking there is an inner critic whenever we are acting there is an inner critic and whenever we watch the results of something there is an inner critic the inner critic will never cease because we have strengthened the inner critic a lot all these years and you always keep saying while doing or after doing or 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 after effects of the doing you keep saying i ought to do this i must do this i should do this i am always getting wrong why how can i be so stupid that's typical of you you're talking to yourself it's a monologue it's a monologue please don't listen to this inner critic so then the question arises should i not be a critic so you be a critic but critic many times condemns what you are doing and why you did not do and the condemnation creates quite a lot of noise inside probably discourages you also many times and several times when the inner critic keeps saying that's typical of you that's typical of you then it becomes your behavior because i will deal with how things do work many times when you keep replaying when you keep reliving that's typical of you how can you be so stupid you really become stupid and that becomes a typical character of you so don't allow the inner critic to dominate rather listen to your inner coach create a coach replace a inner coach instead of inner critic coach will definitely take the notice of or take the note of everything that's happening inside but the coach knows how to actually encourage you and how to how to lead you on the path and get through the situation if you allow the things to the hands of an inner critic you create a prison for yourself because it's not what you say to yourself that matters it's how you say it and how much you believe that counts when you keep saying several times you start believing it and as you start believing it you translate that into reality inner critic can imprison you in your past and be 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 careful this is what happens many times broken record second type of faulty thinking when we get stuck in a groove of thinking all the time thinking the same thing we get into that rut somebody cheated me somebody betrayed me and someone abused me and i'm i'm not ready to forget it i'm not ready to move on i get stuck in the groove and i create misery misery around myself and i keep singing the same song same song to everybody 
i keep replaying the same message and thoughts in mind all the time and not only i keep replaying the same same story inside i also keep replaying the same story to every person that i confront we have seen such people many times in 1952 what happened is i lost all my property because i was a gambler yes you were a gambler why are you even now worried about that why are you stuck in a groove why do you say that to everybody and when you keep saying that to everybody it's a broken record which is playing there may be times when the problems of the past don't need to be fixed or sorted yes some problems happen they need to be left behind this is what i said shut up and move on this is the sumo wisdom sometimes something cannot be corrected you need to endure it and just keep moving on and the third type of faulty thinking is martyr syndrome some people think this is another depressive way of thinking i am unworthy i must sacrifice myself to serve others i don't deserve to be happy my views are less important a kind of what do you say inferiority complex are a kind of complex which makes you think low about yourself this is called as martyr syndrome it's more a reflection of how you see yourself rather than dedication to serve others you bring serving others into this particular picture only to show that you are engaging in martyr dumb no playing the martyr why you do you do this because you think when you punish yourself you are punishing others and you play the martyr in the hope you feel guilty some people are actually at their happiest when they when they get something to be miserable about some people convert their lives like this they carry a heavy pain body in the pain body they store all the miseries all the stories of miseries experiences of miseries they are not ready to shed the pain body becomes a thick crust and wherever they go they carry their pain body and 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 they keep sharing it with everybody and in reality they get into a lot of guilt feeling and the fourth type of faulty thinking is trivial pursuits some people make mountains out of mole hills it's a very very simple issue but i convert it into a very complex issue i am too good in translating simple issues into complex issues creating a lot of anxiety lot of fear and lot of insecurity and a lot of stress i can see you can see people sometimes in the society for small small things small small things which are very small they get upset people get upset and angry over small small things okay somebody got into the bus an aged person in his probably 70s he didn't get a seat adjacent to the window so he started getting upset very angry started shouting at everybody who is sitting on the side of the window i have faced this particular experience myself and my daughter were traveling in a uh, bts bus and once it so happened the person suddenly started shouting at us he said you people so young why are you sitting there why don't you give me the seat beside the window how do i know that he wants the seat beside the window but he was not ready to understand that he was upset and angry and he made a big scene yes these trivial things some people suffer from stress and anxiety due to trivial things they are nothing in like they are there is something which need to be neglected totally but they blow it into out of proportion when they keep doing things like this when trivial becomes when trivia becomes serious issues the effect snowballs and they are living in a different reality which is pseudo reality because what you focus on magnifies if you focus on trivia certainly that magnifies you may not be able to see things in perspective because small small things are haunting you 
then how do you understand there are much more important things later you are stuck in the mud of trivia unless you get out of it how can you look at life from a different perspective perhaps it's not the circumstances that need to change in your life but more your perspectives towards those circumstances how you react to those circumstances you cannot help you may you may come across many situations while you are traveling by the bus you may not be able to get a seat adjacent to the window that doesn't matter the circumstances need not change that is how the circumstances are but unless you change your perspective it's all right even without the window window i can travel or i can request somebody to lend that particular seat which is adjacent to the window things do not improve because what you keep always focusing on look at those people what kind of skimpy dress they are wearing some people have this habit look at these people why they are actually talking with a loud in a loud voice so there are many things which you need to actually see witness with no reaction you should forget that's what i said we need to be we need to be moving on shut up and move on why we slip into faulty thinking there is a scientific way to understand our brain has three parts neocortex is a modern brain or the mammalian brain limbic brain is a emotional brain this is where we have our reticular system and we have reptilian brain that's called as the primitive brain which works on instincts is a dinosaur brain we are many, many times we are driven by reptilian and emotional brain it's not necessarily wrong reptilian brain and emotional brain are the one which have given us some kind of protection when we come across some emergency situations some serious situations we need to work through our instincts immediately our uh, reflex system should work and we need to escape from that situation or we need to fight that particular situation it's our reptilian brain and the limbic brain which has been giving that particular strength since a long time you might have seen our ancestors living in the midst of the forests they faced so many insecurities and they faced those insecurities the threats the frightening situations by activating the reptilian brain and limbic brain and fighting out the situation or flying out from the that situation we need this our reflex actions work through that but always working through reptilian brain and limbic brain is wrong that's what makes us slip into faulty thinking we become too emotional all the times and we 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 forget our rational or uh, thinking brain we don't rationalize being rational always is also dangerous don't think being rational i'm going to solve all the problems all the times you need not be rational being rational always is dangerous again imagine a man eating lion walks into your room can you be rational can you keep asking questions why did this lion in the first place got into my room who sent this particular lion and which kind of lion is it asian lion or is it uh, african lion and why is it actually not creating a mess here simply walking towards me can i ask such questions no immediately my reptilian brain and limbic brain has to work it's not the rational brain but you need to engage rational brain but we fail to engage our rational brain we don't ask right questions we don't work through our rational brain where we are supposed to work in day to day life in human relationships we need to work through rational brain we fail our reticular system spots examples to reinforce see what we believe that's going to be strengthened by the reticular system if we keep believing i am a failure reticular system shows hundreds of reasons why you are a failure it ignores contrary evidence that's how the brain works especially the reticular activating system what i call ras it's there in the mid brain what it does is whatever you think it keeps strengthening it if i buy let's say i bought a honda city car and then i start thinking honda city is the best car and when i go on the roads i inevitably invariably see a lot of honda city cars 
that means to say my reticular activating system is engaged in showing me as many honda city cars as possible it's trying to strengthen my belief and it tries to block the contrary evidence this is why we say don't engage in negative thinking when you keep negatively thinking your reticular activation system shows hundreds and thousands of negative things to you that is the reason we need to think positively positive gets reinforced imagine questions like why it always happens to me don't ask this question why i am so unlucky why i am meted with injustice all these are the questions if you keep replaying and re-rolling in your mind same thing turns out as a reality change the questions your RAS will start looking for evidence that it was ignoring earlier. When you change the questions, RAS will answer those questions. If you start thinking positively, look in how many instances I was lucky, then RAS starts supporting how lucky you were in many situations. So it's a trick that you need to play on your RAS, reticular activating system. I am ending this particular lecture with seven questions to move on from faulty thinking. You know the faulty thinking. What are the faulty thinking? The four faulty thinking that I gave, the inner critic, the broken record, the martyr syndrome, the trivial pursuits. These four faulty thinkings can be, can be transcended by asking right kind of questions. What are the questions? Where is this issue on a scale of 1 is to 10? 1 is the least intense, 10 is the most intense. Where is this issue on a scale of 1 to 10? If it's less than 6, forget about it. How important will this be in 6 months? This is an issue which is haunting me. Will it continue as an important issue even after 6 months? Probably after 6 months, this is not an issue which is forgotten by everybody in the world. If that is the case, why am I supposed to worry so much? Is my response appropriate and effective after giving a response or before giving a response? How can I influence or improve the situation instead of finding I'm helpless in this situation? What can I learn from this? Yes, something happened. Good or bad, in my view. Is there anything to learn from this? What will I do differently next time when I confront the similar situation? See, that's being proactive. What can I find positive in this situation? In every negative situation, there will be something which is positive. Instead of, instead of searching for negativities, why not you search for one positive thing which can be helpful to you? So asking right question is important because the quality of the solution depends on the quality of the question. It's not the answer that enlightens but the question. That's why JK said repeatedly, it is a question which is more important because it is alive. The question is alive. Whereas the answer is dead. Similarly, Eugene Ionesco, a theater artist, once said, it's not the answer that enlightens, it is a question. Please ask right questions in order to get right answers so that you can change your faulty thinking. So today I covered two important principles. Number one, number one, what is the first principle of sumo? The first principle is to, first principle is change your t-shirt. The second principle is develop fruity thinking. Let's try to work on these two principles till we meet next time. Till we meet next time. There is so much that we need to do, we can do and we will do with respect to these two. It's self-observation and self-exploration. Let's try to go ahead through these two steps. And then in the next presentation, I'll take you through the next two steps, which are very, very important. Thank you so much for patient listening. And I thank the organizers of this program from the bottom of my heart. Over to Mr. Vasu.